and I've seen things which it, it is fascinating and almost magical to see certain things. I'm sure you've all heard stories about people going to the hospital and then their contractions space out. Yeah. And that's that natural flight fight or flight yeah. your body is protecting it itself and then you get to the hospital yeah. and hopefully your contractions will start coming closer together yeah but I've also seen situations like, where somebody um, says oh I want to wait until my children are home from school and they're puttering around and their contractions are really far apart yeah. and as soon as their kids come home and they're all ready mentally yeah then they go on to have their baby very quickly Hi everyone, my name is Olga Ziner and I'm a birth photographer, videographer and doula based in New York and today I have a special guest. Hi, I'm Andrea Diamond. I am a midwife practicing in the home birth setting and would you like me to tell a little bit more about myself? Yeah, I met <laughs> Andrea during one of the fastest for me in that time, home birth. And it was an amazing experience. I, I was so impressed by the way you worked, your approach, uh, your attitude to like birthing person. Uh, I don't know your after postpartum lection, <laughs> how to take care of. <laughs> this was like like wow. <laughs> yeah. So I was I was impressed and I fell in love <laughs> to like the the way you work. So today our topic right now like this this small part of topic. Uh, is a home birth and what is this like why people need to consider a home birth and do they need to who can do this who can't do this you know and just mm -hmm. maybe philosophy of midwifery practice in general and maybe like what you bring to your own approach like working here in New York sure okay that's a lot I'm gonna break it down into a little bit I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> home birth so I've been a midwife for about 15 years and I practiced in the hospital in a freestanding birth center and at home and I've been doing home birth for about eight years if I'm doing my math right and home birth is just where it's at it's it's so beautiful to be in the comfort of your own home to have your loved ones around you. If you want to have your children there with you, you can have your children there. Um, you have your own food, <laughs> not hospital food. Um, it's, it's very different. There's a different relationship that I'm able to have with my clients in a home birth than I was able to have in when I practiced in other settings where I, I really get to know them well and if there's something specific that they're hoping for from their birth, then we'll talk about it and I'll know beforehand what it is that they want and I'll do my best to accommodate them. And if there's anything that I can't do and I know I can't do it, we'll talk about it and I'll help them to understand why that might not be possible. But I don't think there's ever been something that hasn't been possible to do in the home birth setting. Um, but I, as a provider, really appreciate that I can provide home birth as an option for people who want it. And not everybody is a good candidate, as you, you brought up, like who's eligible, who's not eligible. Home birth is really only for people who are low risk, and sometimes people sign on when they're low risk and they have to transfer out because they become high risk for things like hypertension, gestational diabetes that you can't control with diet and exercise. Um, there are certain things, not a whole lot, but sometimes there are reasons that people can't be home birth candidates. And for people who are low risk, who want to do home birth, I think that it's just fantastic that I have that option to give. Um, sometimes people are concerned about the safety of home birth, yeah. and I am a certified nurse midwife, I'm a licensed midwife, I am a medical provider, and sometimes people will approach me and say, oh, I don't want any medical providers, and I'm like, wait, I, I am a medical provider, but I think what they really mean is I don't want 
unnecessary interventions. Yeah. And um, that's why I'm here doing home birth is because I also don't want any unnecessary interventions for my clients um, <clears throat> or to be doing them. Yeah. Either. Um, so How, uh, mm -hmm. usually appointment looks like. Ah, so my first appointment I give a full two hours for. We go through everything that is in the chart, their health history. I ask a bunch of questions. It's a little bit of getting to know one another. Um, I check in and see how are you feeling and I give lots of time for people to ask me questions and of course there's you know the real medical part of it by doing you know we do a, a brief physical exam and I check their blood pressure we'll check weight every so often there's somebody who's not comfortable doing a weight check and that's fine too um, we'll go through nutrition in pregnancy. I will give them so many resources in their chart of suggested reading list. Um, we talk about exercise and other fun things like sex in pregnancy. Aww. Just there's so Can much. Can we do it? Absolutely. And it's so funny because sometimes people will not have sex because they're afraid. Sometimes a partner is afraid yeah. that they're going to hurt the baby. Yeah. And so I have like my whole fun thing that I get to talk about with, um, or just about how sex is, not only is it so important, but how it serves a function that oh, wow. if, if it's a male partner, then with a female partner, then intercourse is really important because semen has prostaglandins in yeah. it that can help ripen the cervix. If it's say a same sex couple or a couple that is not having intercourse during pregnancy, yeah. there are other things that they can do to help ripen the cervix, but like to prepare to birth. Yeah. 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 So I'm oh, using, wow. I'm using this term ripen the cervix to make the cervix ready. Yeah. So That's that cool. you don't have to start from scratch. Like when you go to a hospital and they give you Pitocin and Cytotec to first get your cervix yeah. to be more more ready. Yeah, that's a cool thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's really cool. It is, it oh, is. Wow. So, um, you also were asking about philosophy. Yeah. So, I think midwives in general, if I can speak for the whole midwifery community, whether it's hospital, birth center, or home birth, we are trained in physiologic birth. And what that means is the natural process of birth. But when I was a student and I was doing my rotations in the hospital, I remember being at one hospital and the midwife said, oh, Angie, you need to come into this room. This woman doesn't have an epidural. It's very rare that we get to see, a, you know, physiologic birth because yeah. most people are, um, are very medicalized. Like yeah. most births in hospitals are very medicalized. Yeah. So with physiologic birth, we let the body progress naturally yeah. and we intervene not at all or as little as possible. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's amazing when the body can do the work and we just let it go. Yeah. You know, like do what they Yes. Yeah. And another thing that's, that's so helpful about home birth is that when you leave someone to their own devices, their body usually does do what it needs to do. Like you're not interfering. And I've seen things which it, it is fascinating and almost magical to see certain things. I'm sure you've all heard stories about people going to the hospital and then their contractions space out. Yeah. And that's that natural flight fight or flight yeah. your body is protecting it itself and then you get to the hospital yeah. and hopefully your contractions will start coming closer together yeah but I've also seen situations where somebody um, says oh I want to wait until my children are home from school and they're puttering around and their contractions are really far apart and as soon as their kids come home and they're already mentally yeah then they go on to have their baby very quickly That's amazing.